G'day guys, I thought I'd um, just do a, a wee video about a um, different way of painting horses or different materials you can use for painting horses. Um, a long time ago I did a video about it um, um, using artist acrylics and I did a bit of a tutorial or a bit of a chat about it but um, I've lost that video. I, I think I took my videos, a bunch of videos down and then that one just, I didn't have it backed up anywhere so... It's gone. So, um, yeah, I just thought I'd chat about it because I've I'd just been doing some horses this way. I um, mean, and there are lots of different ways, as we know, of painting horses. Going back to um, the old um, oil paint methods where people would put the oil paint on and rub it off and people still do that. Or um, these days it's pretty trendy for people to whack a bit of contrast paint on a horse and um, there's certainly all sorts of completely valid methods and it's all down to what you've got available, the speed in which you want things done, you know, you want an end result and for what purposes, whether you, you're doing it purely for game pieces or you want it for more to display or collection or whatever. So there's lots of different ways of doing it. Um, I... I sort of hover between two different methods and sort of mix two different methods. I use like regular like Vallejo model colour and stuff for painting horses. But sometimes I'll do um, this other way where I use um, artist tube acrylics. Um, and one of the um, sort of strong points about it for me anyway is it has a very long, um, usually a much longer working time and allows you to sort of blend stuff together more and mix as you go. Um, another good thing about going down your art shop and getting some artist tube acrylics when it comes to painting horses is just the colours that you want are usually going to be some among, among the cheapest because um, unlike we tend to pay with um, model colours, um, paints you buy for miniatures, like the AK ones you see on the background or Scale 75, Reaper, Vallejo, whatever they might be, we play a, a, usually a flat rate per bottle. But with um, artist materials, um, it's usually charged by the how much it costs for the raw pigment that's used to make up that particular colour. Um, whereas I think model paints, they tend to spread the cost out across the whole range. So you'll pay, you'll pay how many ever dollars or pounds per per bottle, but they're taking into account the more expensive pigments and, you know, the cheaper pigments and just come to a sort of a, a figure in the middle somewhere. But if you go down the art shop, you'll find that um, they usually have different series. Say this one, for instance, this has got it on it, series one, series one. Um, this one, that's a Derivan Matisse, an Australian paint manufacturer. This Atelier um, one, this again, this is Series 1. This is some black. Now, the Series 1, and I'm not sure if it's a case with all brands, but certainly uh, I've got probably one or two other brands here. Let's see, this is just a cheaper one, a student one. These days I would just buy the... Um, artist ones but i think i had this from years and years ago uh, many years ago when i was perhaps doing some art school stuff I'm not sure probably had it a while but again this isn't a made in australia one i don't know if it talks about the series but it's very similar um to this one here um and I may even have, or I used to have, some Joe Sonia stuff as well, but even some of their stuff's pretty good. But mostly I've got Atelier and Matisse. Let's look at my tubes, acrylic tubes of paint up there, which are artists' stuff. Um, and yeah, and most of those are Series 1. Now, Series 1, um, they're the cheaper ones. That's how you'll know. <laughs> usually, they're usually the ch cheaper per tube. Um, sometimes you can get little, um, mini tubes, like half the size of these. These are, these are 80 mil tubes. Sometimes you can get 
well not half the size but smaller tubes like half size tubes half the size of this roughly somewhere like that um uh, sometimes in sets and that can be a more affordable way of getting them but um these, like I say, are the most reasonably priced because the pigments in them, like carbon black, occlusion in the, in the name, is it's basically uh, also sometimes you'd be called lamp black because it's like it's sooty carbon based stuff. Um, this one is a burnt sienna. This one's a burnt umber. Now these these are classic um, earth colours. And the pigments that they use in the arts, the, the art artist materials uh, places, um, these are cheap pigments for them to buy, compared to some of the more obscure, you know, the not obscure, but so the, the other um, less earthy colours they have, where they have to pay a premium for the actual pigments. Um, these are basically dirt. <laughs> it's just different dirt. <laughs> ochres and dirt and umbers and some of them have been dug up and had had it had been burnt like it's like the clue in the name um and then other times you'll get them where they're called uh here like this one this is raw sienna again a type of earthy color um and then you've got you get also uh have i got an example the same pigment but in its one of its other forms okay all right so that's the umber version other version of umber raw umber burnt umber raw sienna dark oh, there's another one that fits in the series one category that's a greenish black these are some of the colors that i would use for horse colors um there's a naples yellow that's a series one. Yellow ochre, that's a classic. Yellow dirt, <laughs> or clayey, dirty sort of stuff. Um, and all these are very, very much mixable with each other. And um, let me see what else I've got. Uh, yeah, a light red ochre. Now, there are some others as well, often you'll find in, in, in a series, depending which brand you pick up. And I'd probably recommend if you're going to try painting horses, I mean, using artist acrylics, um, get, um, I mean, if they haven't got the smaller tubes, certainly um, get the art, get artist quality stuff because the student stuff, I mean, it's okay, but it tends to be, there there's less pigment density and sometimes the carrier um or the medium in which the um the that it's placed isn't isn't as good a quality medium um and it's, you know it's designed for students and things like that so but first certainly for painting miniatures we want something that's going to give a fairly smooth effect now having said that smooth effect one of the things that you can do that with with painting horses with this stuff is this this stuff is heavy what they call a heavier body unlike the um paints that we use in a, for painting models and stuff um which are, tend to be already really quite drastically thinned some brands more than others you'll find re a lot of reaper paints are very pre-thinned some other stuff is a bit thicker um and it depends on the carrier that they use um some paints like scale 75 use a gel based carrier some have a resiny sort of acrylic resin and there's lots of other different combos and it's sort of finding one that suits you but they tend to be a lot thinner and um, designed to go on easier with the brush straight on um quite runny and they tend to dry out a lot faster one of the things with these is that yeah they'll still dry and sort of plasticize like because they've got like a, an acrylic polymer in them, but they stay open, as they say, for a lot, much longer period of time. You've got a longer working time. So what I've done, say, in the case of this this guy here, um, is um, started with a black undercoat, and I've actually got a carbon black here that would work 
fine. Um, I mean, I know a lot of you guys would use black undercoat anyway, but I don't usually, but I do with horses. Um, so give that whole thing a black undercoat. And then that way, when you start to build up, you can leave because the um, round the horse's knees and the lower part of the legs, if they haven't got any socks or anything like that, it tends to go very dark to black, depending on the, the type of horse it is. But this is just a standard brown horse. Um, yeah. <laughs> A bay or something like that. No, uh, you just did bog standard, quite common brown horse where the 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 mane and the tail tend to be black, and then you get sort of black around the knees. And if they haven't got socks, it's going to be black pretty much, but uh, black all the way down to the hoof. Um, so I haven't. I will put a, some socks on this dude uh, on this horse, um, but haven't done so yet. So I've started from a black base. And then I've I've used this um, well I've started with burnt umber, the burnt umber over the um, over the horse building up the musculature and stuff like that. And then I've laid down what have I laid down? Yeah, burnt sienna basically. This one, burnt sienna. So you can see there's quite a jump up in colour from really dark to a really bright, but they're very easy to mix together. So you, could, you just take a bit of that and a bit of that and a bit of that and you get the how you know, you get various stages, depending on how many stages you want to take it up. But what happens is that as you apply it to the horse, it's really easy to blend because, like I say, the open time of the paint is much longer and it's a bit thicker as well. It gives a nice sort of, not a not super textured, but a slight sort of, um, sort of a texture. It's not as smooth, but I think it's suitable for horses for animals and and eventually you know I, I so what i've done is i've started with the darkest i've pegged out the musculature with that mixed a bit of this in my um burnt sienna in and with the burnt burnt umber and then gradually worked up until your final muscle highlights i'm dealing with um pure pure burnt sienna now what i could do if i wanted an even brighter horse i could um then make it really pop if i wanted to go for a lighter or a brighter red horse i could put um another tiny little dab of um light red ochre out or something like that or i could mix any of these colors together these are all highly mixable that's that's a good thing you know these this type of series one um artist acrylics they're the cheapest ones you'll find in the art shop because they're made of dirt different types of dirt basically or carbons and things like that, clays and gritter ground up. And um, they're affordable and they're natural. They're made from things that have come from the earth. They're not um, some weird, you know, chemical or anything like that. And they tend to be perfect for horses um, to depict the various shades on a horse. So, you know, you could you can go for a sort of a more of a yellowy horse using like a raw sienna dark or something like that and they're all very mixable and blendable very easy to blend and blend on the horse itself you know um you don't have to be a fancy blender to make them blend they just really easy easily go into each other you don't have to use like fancy two brush blending techniques or fang dangled things like that because they're still staying open and workable on the horse you're able to blend them as you go. And this paint is still wet here on my palette. Now, normally, paint dries pretty quick when I'm using it on an open palette like this rather than a wet palette. Um, model paint, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll put it down and I want to come back and get that colour again, but lo and behold, it's dried out and I have to put some more drops down. And so, if you you know, that can be a pain in the butt. So that's where, you know, a wet palette's handy in that regard is you've still got it there and you can come back to it. It's not about that you're you know you're desperately trying to save paint, but it's more about the inconvenience of having to like constantly lay out some more and lay out some more and lay out some more because I kept drying up. But like I say, this is this stays workable for a long time. Now, um, so I'll show you some um, just a couple on a, even on a smaller scale. Here's some other examples. So here we go. Here's this is a one seventy second Napoleonic horse Let's see if i can bring it in yeah it's going to go into the dark there i'll just adjust my lights down way bright light bright light 
Man, why it doesn't like that? Bit too bright. Let's try and point them all towards, but somehow away. <laughs> Maybe up. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. So I've used the same kind of. Um, well, I've used the same technique basically, but on a smaller scale figure, and you can do it. I'm sure you can go down to quite small scales with it, and um, it just blends so easily. So again, I've used the same sorts of colours, uh, pretty much that I've used on him. I may not have gone as bright. No, I think I hadn't gone up quite as to the full uh, burnt burnt sienna um, on this guy. I'm painting these for my son. Um, so let's see. Another example of another one I'm working on here. Um, again, I've gone up two colours that are um, pretty much in line with what you see here. So I've gone right up to the top now. Now these these kind of horses are particularly fine to work with because the sculptor, these this type of, uh, this is an Italeri um, Hazar, and they they have worked from, um, the original sculptor would have hand sculpted a much larger figure. Um, a bit like, when you would see the Perrys make their plastic sets and they'd have, what would they be, I think, they're, are they called three ups or something or five ups or something? Anyway, they have a much larger scale figure and then by the powers of technology that is reduced. So this same set can be purchased in 135th or 132nd, but it also can be purchased in 172nd and the sculpting is highly detailed because it wasn't sculpted at 172nd, so you get this really, really good musculature on the horses, and that, that makes it great fun to paint. Now, the challenge can be where some sculpting on some War Games miniatures isn't as good, um, and it's a bit hard to pick, harder to pick out those muscles to get that, those, that blending and that shape. So, yeah, you've got to just... Uh, flow with go with the flow with that sort of thing just depends now and this type of working won't suit um everyone um that's for sure this type of uh painting um so let me see i don't really want there's not not much point trying to film and me actually painting and because it's actually rather difficult to do um given my workspace I could try. <laughs> I'd have to do it I'd, on a 172nd. Anyway, with this, with the larger figure, this, um, I think this is a gripping, no, it's a foot saw miniature, um, I believe. I think um, he's probably a Strathclyde Welsh or something like that. Anyway, he's still just got his wash, base colours and washes. There's a ton of work to do there, but I've, I've gone and started to do some work on the horse. And what I'll do is I'll lighten up um, the greys on the the mane and all that sort of stuff and, 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 and highlight all that up. And like I said, put socks on. But um, let me see. So if we get something like this. So I'm getting, I hope my camera doesn't fall over. I've got it on one of these bendy stands. So it's very hard to paint around a phone. So yeah, it's just sketching in the shapes of the musculature. But leaving it dark towards where those knees are. So yeah, it's got good musculature on the neck stuff that you can define and leaving 
I'm not being too precise here except to stop when you get too close to the knee and all the straps and things can be touched up later. You can even see that I'm not using a particularly tiny brush or anything. It's a big, biggish brush. Certainly, a, well, what size is it? It's a, it's a size 6, just a cheap synthetic size 6. So, yeah, I just want to get in with the darker stuff and define those shapes. And perhaps I'll just paint this one side of the horse a bit to give you a bit of an idea. And then, I mean, this has been out in the palette for quite some time, but I can work it, you see. So I just blend a bit of it both in there. Give my hands a bit more room. Got brushes everywhere here. Brushaholic. And, um, and it's still wet, and I can start to blend these colours in. Please excuse me, sort of reflections and things. I think they're probably getting a bit of glare. Tilt this up a bit. There we are. And you can watch this video. And it'll help put you to sleep. <laughs> Just like watching paint dry. You are really, in a sense, watching paint dry. I wouldn't better do this for too long anyway, because I'm kind of leaning and it over the top of the camera. And it's not exactly good for one's lower back. And ideally, but I didn't have one prepped, one would do this on a larger scale figure so in, for demonstration purposes because this is only 172nd. I mean, it's a very well, the master was very well sculpted, but it is a smaller wee horse. So we're not too worried at the moment about going over the, the tack and the bridle and all that sort of stuff because that can be tidied up later. We're just starting to blend these colors together on the horse itself you blend them on the horse as you go because it's giving you that open working time so i'm going to start to let's get a bit more drastic and put a bit more of the um the brighter burnt sienna into our color you want to get it up on the top of the horse up on the rump and the... and if you find that you've put too much in you can blend it back in now this is obviously not much chop if you're wanting to speed paint although I'm sure you probably could get a bit faster at doing this if you're sort of bold and brave get a big brush and and then are prepared to um tidy up all your reins and stuff later because you effectively you can wet blend on the go on this see now there i'll put too much on where's my tissue gone no, it's buried under get the paper towel You don't actually want a lot of water on here. You want the paint to do the, the thickness of the paint to help you get texture and enable you to blend your colours. It's a bit messy up there. Like I say, this is not how I would normally paint, not leaning over the top of the camera like this and probably doesn't garner the best results. But let's just, yeah, and we're only doing half a horse, so let's just jump straight up to the 
the brightest stuff. Let's see what we can do. Now I can wipe some of that off on the towel. I'm going to start to draw that down, blend it with the paint. The paint that I just applied, because it's still open, as they say. It's still open for service. It's still workable. I'm going to get the tops of those muscles. And if it goes on if it's too heavy or whatever, I'll just go back. Blend it in a bit. So you can see anyway, I mean this is a bit rugged, but how we're building up. Those highlights on the horse. Oops. Yeah, I wouldn't normally be so clumsy, but <laughs> reaching over the top of a phone. And I keep hitting my lamp with the end of my brush. <laughs> Yeah, and if you lay it down too heavy, you can blend it back in. I don't want too much water in it. That is the thing when you're working like this. You want you want the paint to do the work. You don't want a a lot of extra water with this this type of thing but um the paints you can use them for other um things you don't have to say oh they're just my paints i use for horses um because there's nothing stopping you from if you want them to you want to make more use of them you know you've paid the money for them um but to add some something to them you know add a flow improver or a matte medium or a glazed medium or something and you can get them to start to behave quite differently because they're still just paint like anything else they're just in a heavier a heavy uh, sort of carrier at the moment but they are just pigment in a medium which is exactly what all our stuff is that we usually use our Vallejos and that's just pigment in a medium. Anyway, that's pretty crude, but um, you still hope you started to see how that's going up from dark to light. the best example of painting but but um, yeah in theory if I was doing it probably I would yeah and that the paint has a natural sheen to it but you can uh, certainly sort that out with some varnish so here there's this the plain black yeah so like I say I'll leave the black on the horse you can still see it looks wet and it'll stay workable for quite a while. But then it will dry just like the rest of the normal paint. and can be varnished and everything else, you know. And yeah, it can have a slight sheen, a natural sort of sheen to it. But that doesn't matter. I mean, you can either let that stay, because sometimes horses do just have that natural sheen. Then, or you can um, 
put the varnish of your choice over it. It's just acrylic paint like any other. Like I say, it's just got a different carrier medium. And you may find that it's more pigment rich than some other brands, even modeling brands. But um, yeah, so just a bit of something different. Um, if you want me to, maybe I could do a bit more on that. It's, it, like I say, it is hard to paint with the having the camera where it is and where I'm positioned. But um, yeah, so I'll, I'll continue working on this chappy here. So I'm going to go and um, sort him out some um, socks and um, probably a, a blaze down the nose and certainly get some uh, lighten up the mane and the tail and um, put some colour on the hooves and stuff. Yeah. So there you go. So, yeah, look, I'd encourage anyone to, um, anyone that's in the hobby to not just lock yourself into the products that you buy from a um, miniature supply place or war games hobby shop or whatever, but go and have a look in your local art supply stores because there are plenty of things in there that we can use for our hobby they may not look like it on the surface and 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 don't lash out and necessarily buy giant tubes of things because you'll probably never get through it in a month of sundays and if there are smaller options get them but it's worth experimenting with um and seeing what you can do with them they're certainly a great source of brushes i i um actually a really good recommendation something i came across my local art shop and these have been fantastic this is a um this is a brush company that that um is in israel um they're originally in the uk and they were called um i think they were called baker brushes or mr baker owned it and then to get the company name he just put his name backwards and they became recab um and then he uh moved to israel and um, the, the Recab Brush Company is over there. And um, I picked these up, some of these Recab Sable brushes um, in my local art store um, for really inexpensive. And so far, I found that th this is a number two and it holds such a good point. And it's got really nice belly on it so that it'll, for the flow of paint, but it holds such a good point. That I don't, I can do a lot of really fine detail stuff with this. I'd be doing faces and all sorts of things with it because it really is comes to an excellent point. Um, I actually found the number two to be even better, better than the number one size one. So have a look if you could find these Recab Pure Sables. Um, like all brushes, I think um, even Windsor and Newton has their bad days, and you can hit a batch where something was off <laughs> on that day for the brush maker or whatever and you get some that are, are just terrible splitters or whatever like that but um this was pretty inexpensive compared to a Windsor and Newton or something like that but I I rate it as a very good brush so far um in in my use of it um yeah really pleased with them and I have tried quite a lot of different brushes over the years. Um, maybe that's a topic for another video about, and again, it can come down just to your style of painting. But um, yeah, so tip tip for the, for the day would be to check out your local art shop. There are things that we can use in there, loads of them. Even, make, even your own pigment powders can be made by smashing up some of the excellent um, pastels that you can get in there get a get a wee hammer and buy some of these cheap series one colors earth colors in in the pastels and um hit them with a hammer <laughs> before you know it you'll have a little pot of um weathering powder for much less price than you would probably pay for other modelers brands but anyway there's all sorts of things in there go and check it out um now that horse is starting to dry uh, to look a bit better and um, still got that nice sort of sheen to it 
But uh, you guys can see the difference from the black. Yeah. Just another way of painting horses. It might suit some people. Or you might get some ideas from it. I don't know. Anyway, another long video from me as per normal. And um, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.